Hey everyone, so before we begin the actual demo and do a little bit of coding, I just want to do a quick overview of what we're going to cover. I don't think I do enough of that. I think I jump a little bit too quickly in the coding because there are certain concepts that I want to cover. So a quick overview, only take about two minutes. Don't want it to take too long. I realize that PowerPoints have a way of making people's eyes glaze over. So this is going to be the collision tutorial. So there are basically two types of collisions in Unity. The first type is when both objects are solid. So think of a ball bouncing against a wall or bouncing off of the floor or two cars hitting each other or a car hitting a wall. Both objects are solid. They don't pass through each other. Uh, we're not going to think about, say, destructible objects right now. We're talking just very basic type of collisions. So you've got two solid objects. They don't pass through each other. Maybe they bounce off each other or maybe they come to a halt but they do not go through each other. So that's the first type where both objects are solid. The second type is where at least one is what's called a trigger, and that is one object can pass through the other. So when would you want this? Well, think about maybe an environmental hazard, like so maybe this fire on the ground, and you don't want it to stop the player. The player goes through the fire, but now maybe they get damage over time. Likewise, maybe it's a cloud of gas, or maybe it's mud, that they travel through the mud, but the mud is going to have some kind of effect, and that it slows them down, that kind of thing. So there are solid collisions, and then there's collisions where at least one is a trigger. And the last thing that I want to mention is that collisions occur without coding. You do indeed have to use a component known as a collider, which we'll get into in just a second. So you do need to have a component known as a collider on the objects, but the actual collision detection occurs without coding. So you want that ball to bounce off the wall. You're probably not going to have to do any coding to make it happen. You might have to do a little bit with materials and things like that. But as far as like firing up a C sharp script or something, you don't have to do that. The collision automatically occurs and it automatically detects. So the physics aspect of it, you may not have to do any kind of coding for if you're happy with the kind of built in physics. However, when it comes to the trigger collisions, since the object is not automatically being stopped by the other object, in those cases, you probably will have to do coding. Now, it is possible that when both objects are solid, you might want to do some kind of coding, like for instance, um, a projectile hitting an enemy. You're going to want some coding that says that either one or both of those objects get destroyed. But in the case of an object passing through, say, like the fire or the gas or the mud, you're going to have some coding that says what happens. Does the velocity of the player slow down because it's mud? Does the player's HP variable get reduced because they're going through fire? That kind of thing. So the actual collision occurs without coding. But if you want to give specific instructions, then you need coding. Okay, so uh, that's the presentation. Let's get into the demonstration now. Okay, so here we are in Unity. Now, before we continue, I just want to mention that collision detection and collision handling in 2D and 3D environments, very similar. There needs to be a collider component. You just have to declare whether it's the 2D or 3D version, which I'll show you in a minute. And the coding also has to acknowledge whether it's a 2D or 3D component that you're looking at. So. Let's start by creating an object. We'll go to game object, we'll do 3D object, and we'll do sphere. So the sphere appears in the work area, in the scene. You can see it over here in the hierarchy. You can see the sphere selected. And when you have an object selected, you can see in the inspector the various components. So each rectangular section is a component. So you have the transform component, which gives it position, rotation, scale. You have the mesh filter and the mesh renderer, which gives it its appearance. And then here you have the sphere collider. So this is what I've been talking about. This is what actually detects the collision. Because you can have a visual object that has no collision detection. You could remove the collider, and then there would be no way of detecting that a collision has occurred. Now, if you click on Edit Collider, let's zoom in a bit, you can see this green 
mesh that kind of pairs around it. Maybe I shouldn't use the term mesh since that's already being used. But you can see like this green cage that gets surrounding in it. Well, if you grab one of the points, you can actually change where the collider occurs. So again, the visual appearance does not have to match the collider. And you could say, all right, well, why would you do that? Well, first of all, think of Pac-Man. The old school Pac-Man, did Pac-Man lose the moment a, a ghost brushed against him? No, the ghost actually had to overlay him by a fair amount. And so what you would have in that situation, 2D, of course, but in that situation, you'd have a collider that's smaller than the image that's on the screen. Okay, so we have our object, we have our collider. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another component just for the purposes of this demonstration. I won't go into a lot of explanation. I'll have a separate tutorial for that. In fact, I might put it before this one. We do add component. We do physics. See how this physics 2D and 3D? So like I said, if you're in the 2D environment, you would choose a 2D collider. But we're in 3D, so we go to physics. And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose rigid body. Rigid body allows for giving an object velocity and basically applying physics to the object. By default, it uses gravity. And that's about all I'm going to talk about that because like I said, I'll cover that in a separate video. But basically, to detect a collision, we really need an object to be moving. So that's why I'm giving this a rigid body. So we'll grab the y-axis and just push that up a bit. And now we'll create another object. So game object, 3D object, sphere. Whoops, sorry, not sphere. Let's make it a block. So game object, 3D object, cube. We'll also shrink this a little bit. So Y scale, let's make that 0.5. We'll take the Y, we'll push this down so we have a little time to see what's going on. And we'll also scale this out in size. So let's make this say three by three. We'll click on a camera over here. And that looks good because you can see the ball and you can see the platform beneath it. So basically, we have everything we need to detect a collision. So we have our sphere that has a collider. We have our platform that has a different type of collider, a box collider. Okay. Neither one of them are set to triggers. We'll mention that as the second type in a minute. And the sphere has the rigid body, which now gives it motion. And as you can see, gravity is applied. So we're just going to run this. And the collision occurred. You can see the sphere stopped. So that's what we're saying about collisions are automatically detected. You don't need coding for a collision to occur. Now, if you notice, it really didn't bounce. So you would have to apply a uh, physics material that gives it bounce. But even still, you're not going in there and editing any kind of code to make a collision be detected, that the physics environment is working by default. Now, having said that, say you want something to happen. Maybe you want the orb to be destroyed when it collides here. Well, we certainly can do that. So like, say it's a bomb or something. So let's take a look at how we do that. So let's go ahead and create a C Sharp script. And what we're going to do is within the script, we're going to give instructions as to what should happen at the moment of a collision. So right click down here, create C Sharp, and we'll call this orb underscore con short for orb control you can call it really whatever you want we'll click on our sphere we'll drag and drop it there and now the orb underscore con script is now a component just like the other components so like for instance if we were to copy this object the script would also be copied with it so in other words you code once, and then it affects every single instance of this object. But that's for another tutorial. So let's go ahead and open that up. And so what we're going to do outside of start, and when I say that, for start, you can see here's the squiggly bracket. So anything that happens here happens during initialization. Here's the update section. Here's its squiggly brackets. Everything happens there once per frame. 
So we want it to be outside of that. We want this to happen only when there's a collision. It's void. So on collision enter. And then since it's Microsoft Visual Studio, it fills it out for me. So it wrote, writes collision, and then this is going to be the variable that we will check. So this represents what is being collided with. So like, for instance, if you wanted to check what it's colliding with, you'd use this. If you don't care, if you just say any collision is fine. So we're just going to say if any collision is happening. So this is saying if a collision occurs, as soon as the collision occurs, we want something to happen with no other conditions. So you don't have to say if the collision occurs, this is this is only triggered. May I shouldn't use the word trigger, but this will only execute when the collision has occurred. So we can just do destroy game object. So what this is saying, and then there's a semicolon at the end. This is saying is that when the collision occurs, destroy the game object that the script is attached to. This script is attached to the sphere. So we're going to save this. Unity, make sure no errors appear, and we run it. There you go, and it got destroyed. So like I said, the collision happens. You don't have to use any code in for the collision to occur, and natural physics will happen. You only need coding if you want to do an override, so to speak, if you want to do some kind of intervention, like we said, a, a projectile hitting an enemy. In that case, you want the projectile and probably the enemy to be destroyed, or maybe you want the enemy's HP to be reduced, that kind of thing. And let's make one tweak to the code, and then we'll wrap up this video. So let's go back to our script. So right now, when the collision occurs, the object is immediately destroyed. After game object, put in a comma and then the number two. What that says is wait two seconds, then destroy the object. So what's happening once we've done this is upon collision, you are now triggering a countdown that will then lead to the destruction of the object. So we save that, go back to Unity, run it lands two seconds later it gets destroyed so maybe it's a timed explosive like a hand grenade or something like that okay i think that should do it for this video so in the next video we'll look at triggers and we'll look at several examples of those like i already mentioned a couple such as fire or gas or mud um, and there's actually another use for the ability to move a collider like i showed you how with the sphere you could actually move where the collider is. In the next video, we're going to look at that because that tends to have more applications with triggers. Okay, so I hope you find this useful. Uh, let me know if you want me to continue with the series. Just do a like or a comment, and I will continue. And I hope this has been helpful.